I don't know who my father was that I'm aware of. I'm adopted, okay? But what I was saying to him, I said, the conversation but that I'm going to have with you right now is a conversation if I knew my father that he would have with me. And right now, I'm feeling that. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you and share some things with you that I've seen, that I've experienced. And ultimately, it's your call. It's your choice. But I've seen a thing or two. I know a thing or two. I can't make the choices for you. All I can share with you to minimize the, 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 the pain and, and disappointment and just living a life that's not you, that does not represent the highest that's within you. I'm, I'm going to talk to you now about some things that, that I'm encouraging you to do so that your future you, your future life that's in you will say, man, I'm glad you did that. Wow. I'm glad you made that choice. I said, are you with me? He said, yes, sir, dad. I said, don't, don't you have anything to say? Well, he said, well, I'm not going to argue for my limitations. All right, because I was telling him about something. I said, you don't want to do that. That's, a, that's, that's not going to help you. Make choices and ask yourself the question, is this going to bring the best out of me? Is, is this moving my life and the direction that represent the highest that is within me? Or is this going to take me down a path at some point in time, I will regret that I made this choice. Robert Frost, come forth, please. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and I, I selected the road less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. The road to life is straight and narrow, and few there be that find it, because few there be that are willing to be disciplined. Few there be that are willing to listen. Few there be that are coachable. Few there be that are willing to leverage the experiences of other people so they can maximize their impact in this thing called life. You can't tell them anything. There's nothing worse than arrogance and ignorance. People who think they know and they don't know. I push something old out of my brain. Did you hear what I just said? Every time you learn something new, you push something old out of your brain. See, a lot of people don't want to learn now. They're lazy. Yes, yes. And, and that's okay. That's none of your business, none of my business. But if you're one of those like me, hungry, people that are hungry are willing to learn. People that are hungry know when you learn something new, you push something old out of your brain. You're keeping your mind active because you're engaged in this thing called life. You still have a presence. You're forced to be reckoned with, to be reckoned with. You have something special. You have greatness in you. And, and my goal at, 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 at 75, when on, on February 17th, I'll be 76 is to finish strong. Yes, I'm going for it. I haven't done all my work yet. There are more lives for me to touch, more lives for me to transform. I, I had a, a business meeting with a guy and he said, I'm so excited to work with you. And I said, why is that? He said, I've been listening to you since I was seven years old. My father would put your cassette tapes in while he was driving me to school and he said I, I never thought I'll meet you and I'm so honored I said well I'm honored to meet you as well some of you have been listening to me since you were, were just little teeny weenies <laughs> okay <laughs> you've been listening to me for years some of you you're going through some stuff and you heard my voice and I lift your spirit in the midst of stuff I, I was able to bring you to tears or, or make you laugh, make you feel good. Some of you know this voice. 
Yeah, that's Mamie Brown's baby boy. Yeah, that's Mamie Brown's baby boy. <laughs> and had I not been willing to learn something new, if you if you're not one of those people and, and, and you're ready to be coached or you're ready for breakthrough thinking, as Dr. Stan would say, Dr. Breakthrough, Stan Harris. I, I want you to teach me how I could do what I love to do, make a lot of money, and have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? I got it like that. As, as Reverend Ike would say, you can't lose with the stuff I use. <laughs> oh, behave. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You got to laugh today. You got to. You, you got to find ways and create special moments. I'm, I'm creating a moment that we spend together. You're going to be saying to some of your friends, you know what? I watched that crazy boy, Les Brown, Mamie Brown's baby boy. He had me rolling, child. He needs he, he need some help. He's a little touch of the head, really. He, he cut his flat top off, too. Yeah, he used to be looking like kid in play from house party. Yeah, he used to cut the flat top off. Somebody got to him. <laughs> No, they did not. Did not, not, not. I just did it because it's a new year. I'm going to get it done in 21. There's some things I'm determined to do, determined to accomplish. What is it that you're determined to do, that you are determined to accomplish, that you've been going at it again and again and again, and, and, and you fail, and now you're ready to quit, or you've already quit. I'm saying to you, come, Lazarus, come forth. Had to call him three times. Come on, you, you got the power to come out of there. Lazarus, didn't you hear me? You know something. People watch and say, you know, I think Jerusalem Slim has lost it. He called and we told him the man's dead. Yeah, there's a lot of people walking around with a lot of potential in them that's dead. Greatness in them, that's dead. Genius in them, that's dead. Abilities and talents that need to be resurrected, that's dead. Greatness and, and abilities to change the world that needs to be called for three times. Lazarus, come for Whoa. Now, how come? How come I got a telephone call worth millions? I had become valuable. Now, I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was raised in obscurity. One year of college, and I thought I was thoroughly educated. Made all kinds of mistakes galore. At age 25, the creditors are calling me saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I got pennies in my pocket. I got nothing in the bank. I'm behind on my promises. How come I get a telephone call five years ago and it's worth millions? I changed, I changed. I turned my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions? Speaking economically, now there's a lot of values to become, but let's just talk economics. Is it possible to become that valuable? And the answer is, of course, of course. Now, let me give you the secret. Show said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You'd say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my cell. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job, work hard on yourself and develop the graces. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, Telling you no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. You just go to work on the right thing. Not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. 
Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change. The easiest thing I do every year is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, going into prisons and juvenile detention centers, teaching young people mindset development, how to become effective communicators, how to dress like a prospect rather than a suspect. Those are the easy things that I do. Let me share with you the most difficult thing that I've ever done in my life, and that was to believe that I could do it. That's the most difficult thing that I've ever done in my entire life. To believe that I, Les Brown, who was born in an abandoned building on a floor in a poor section of Miami, Florida, with a twin brother, we were adopted, we were six weeks of age by Mrs. Mamie Brown. To believe that I, Les Brown, who was labeled educable mental retarded, put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, fail again when I was in the eighth grade. To believe that I have the ability to live the life that I'm now living. No one could have told anybody who knew me, including myself, looking in on us when Mrs. Mamie Brown was raising us in a poor section of Miami, Florida called Liberty City in Overtown, that I would be who I am right now. I didn't even know that. And I want you to think about your goals and dreams, and I want you to expand them. Why? Because it has been said that most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. No, most people fail in life because they're just like I was for 14 years. They aim too low and hit and many never aim at all not at all they just go through life surviving someone said that many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65 so that you'll have mental food to feast on long after the lights are out and we've left the premises now we also need mental exercise we talked about debate earlier that's good mental exercise is it or isn't it here's what's important to debate with yourself to look at both sides of the issue, you must be a student of tragedy as well as triumph. You must be a student of ill as well as good. Ideas, learning to debate with yourself what's good, what's bad, what's good for you, what isn't good for you. Keep your mind vigorous. Study evil as well as good. You need a good library. In this library, you need all kinds of diversity. You need a book on Gandhi and you need a book on Hitler. Gandhi to show you how high and lofty someone's ambitions that are noble can go, and the other one to show you how despicable and low someone can sink in terms of pure evil embodied in a human. Don't be afraid of the debate. Don't be afraid of the health debate. Don't be afraid of the religious debate, the spiritual debate. Don't be afraid of something you believe in to be challenged, because that's where the vigor and the and the flourishing of something is that it, it survives the debate. If it survives the debate, it's a pretty good idea. My dad had his 13th heart attack. I went to Seattle Medical Center. I go upstairs to the hospital, and they're treating him like dirt. And I lose it. Completely lost it. Throwing stuff around, they're bringing security, escorting me out of the hospital, and I'm just lashing out at him. It's my dad. You don't do anything to my dad. It's like you crossed the line there. And the one person says this to me. Hey, listen, if you had money, you could get better insurance and get better doctors to take care of your dad. But you didn't pay for this. Government's paying for this. This is called public health insurance. Oof. He's right. I went in the car downstairs. In my Ford Focus at the time, I had lost everything. 49, I, nothing was going right. My girlfriend left me. We're about to get married. Everything is bad. I'm in my car. 30 minutes, I'm crying like a little baby. 30 minutes. That night, in my Ford Focus, I fully got it. My dad's not going to work at this 99 cent store ever again. The Bedevit family, all these people that would say Bedevit family, oh, divorce, Middle Eastern mom and dad got a divorce. Poor Bedevit, he's probably going to be a bad kid, hanging out with gangsters. And he went to the army because that's the only savior he had. I said to my family, I said, let me simplify something for you guys. Listen, I said, the world's going to know this last name. I know the pain we went through.